Hello there, fight friends. MMA Andy Cotterell here with Kevin Popwick Bastien, just ahead of his fight at U uh, Samurai MMA 9 uh, against Antoine Chaput. Kevin, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm so happy to be speaking with you. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. I appreciate you asking me these questions. Oh, well, good. Or do you appreciate that I said your name properly in the correct order? Yes, dude. You have no idea. Kevin Bastian, Popovic, Popovic. There's a million ways to mess up my name and somehow nobody gets it right. <laughs> I think maybe it has to do with your topology account that it's it's backwards. So you, tell us your name exactly how you like saying it. Kevin Popovic. Yeah, Kevin Popovic Bastian. Yeah, so I know that. I made sure I knew that like right off the bat a couple of years ago, but it's often like backwards. Okay, so we've set the record straight. From now on, anybody gets it wrong, flying elbow. Uh, no, I'll just make fun of you a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's a deal. All right, <laughs> so for those of uh, the fans who might be watching now and are just being introduced to you, just take a minute and tell us who you are and, and what you're all about. Um, well, my name is Kevin Popwick Bastier, and that's how you pronounce it, first of all. Uh, and then, uh, I'm an MMA fighter. Um, I train at Niagara Top Team, and uh, I he live here at, uh, in Thorold now, in Ontario. And I heard somebody's voice in the background. Is that your roommate? Who's your roommate right now? My roommate right now is Aaron Jeffrey. There he is. Look at that glorious mane of hair. I'm here with Amin, too. Let's go. Oh, poor. I was scheduled to talk with Amin, but uh, unfortunately, his fight fell through. I was really bummed to hear that. Yeah. Anyway, well, bad news for him, but good news for you. As of uh, just a few days away, you're still scheduled to fight, which is uh, not a given in this day and age. A lot of fights seem to fall through these days. Uh, tell us about this fight coming up and with Antoine and, and your thoughts on it. Um, I think it's... Every fight is important and every fight is special, but as far as just fights go, I think it's just another one of them. I, I've fought already professionally eight times, and I think I'm just going to fight another time this weekend, and that'll be it. Mm -hmm. Do you find there's a, a huge difference in fighting in front of uh, a Quebecois audience and an Anglo audience? Uh, I don't find so, but I haven't fought in Quebec in a little while. Like I fought in my hometown, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the difference, I talked about this a little bit on uh, my interview with La Reina, is, uh, the commission, how like things are run backstage. Um, it's just run a little bit differently than Ontario. And like, uh, I've also fought in BC and every commission is kind of different, right? The way it's, they are yeah. the, when they give you gloves, when, uh, what, even the weigh-in format. So I feel like there's a lot of uh, different wrinkles to the way that they operate and just stuff that you have to like kind of go with, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about the preparation you had for this fight. Uh, just a little bit of a backdrop. Uh, your your last fight was a loss, unfortunately. And I, you know, I watched it and I was quite shocked when it happened, actually, because I didn't think it was going to happen like that. Uh, I didn't think it was going to happen at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you were. So, like, how do you – I'm always curious about the mental aspect of training and for, for a fighter because, you know, as a non-fighter myself, I imagine – I can only imagine that it's really – up and down depending on the day and the training session and you know so you know the saying some days you're the hammer sometimes you're the nail how do you keep yep. a positive me mental attitude when uh, things aren't going your way well first thing is you understand that exactly some days you are the hammer and some days you are the nail and then is you just don't always keep a positive mental attitude it doesn't matter how you feel mm -hmm. you show up to the gym and you fucking train anyways right yeah that's right Niagara Top Team's got a got a, a mantra you kind of shout during and after the training session, hard work. And I guess that's yeah. all you can do. That's it. But, oh, I mean, what else are we supposed to do? Are, like, It's not like we're destined or we know the future of these fights because then we'd be undefeated. Um, yeah, the whole team yeah. would be undefeated, right? Like The reason why we're having these fights is so we'd see who wins. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely right. And, uh, but it's just, I talked to so many guys and some of them, it seems like the smallest bit of adversity and that's it. It's over for them. You can see that look in their face that they're done. But with you, it's, it's obvious that 
you know, you know that you're in a good spot. You know, you've got a good skill set. You know, you've got an excellent situation for training. So, I mean, you still have a lot of car great cards in your favor. Yeah, we just act like idiots too, right? Like, if we don't know that we're supposed to lose, then sometimes we'll win when we shouldn't, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple things that sort of endeared you to some people, like me, I don't know, especially, but some things I, I loved you doing, even though afterward you you said it was probably not the smartest thing to do, is, you know, during one of your fights, it was a BTC, you did a flying drop kick right off the bat of the fight. And I know you yeah. were shaking your head and like the guys were making fun of you a bit, but as a fan, it was kind of thrilling to watch. And then was your post Samurai MMA 6 uh you know sort of talk in the cage after it was like you were cutting a wrestling promo sort of that like a uh, extravagant phrasing and stuff and you just had the crowd in the palm of your hand man where did that come from um so breaking the fourth wall here um it comes from watching tape and like anything else you get better at it while with practice and um the other thing without breaking the fourth wall is uh i'm just a natural that's how i do things i go with the flow i these things come off the top of my head and uh i just in the cage when i chose to do that drop kick i just chose to like i was like you know what it would be crazy right now if i did this no that's not what happened at all i practiced that drop kick maybe a hundred times during camp and i was scared of my my coaches yelling at me for practicing it so uh, i would wait till they left the gym and then i'd go practice it i'd take the crash mat put it on the side of the wall and I'd like practice my drop kicks. Like I knew that like if I landed wrong, I could like break my arm or whatever, right? So sure. even though you're gonna do something stupid, Jordan Peterson talks about this. Do something dangerous very slowly, or you do something very dangerous as safe as you can, because mm. then you get the experience from it, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So if I can do a drop kick on uh Jamie Flick, then maybe I can do a drop kick on Antoine Chapou. Yeah, you never know. Well, the reality of a fighter's life, especially mixed martial arts, is that your skill set and your record is only part part of what you need to do, right? So if you want to get to the point where you're signed to the UFC or, or Bellator, like your roommate Aaron or other big organizations, they're not only looking for fighters with winning records, fighters that, that can seal the deal. They want people with personalities and they need people that can sort of bring in bring in eyeballs and sell tickets and stuff. And so I think it's probably smart doing stuff like like that. Like you take a look at uh, Jorge Masvidal when he did the flying knee on uh, on Ben Askren. I mean, people are still talking about that now. So had you connected with that drop kick and, and you know maybe knocked him out, your name would have been sealed in the in the annals of Canadian MMA history forever. So sometimes you know you didn't knock him out that time, but who knows whatever. You oh, do that next. was the goal. That was I've never had somebody counter my drop kick with a Superman punch before, but. Uh... Yeah. If you jump off the ground, I can only jump so high, right? Yeah. Well, so I'm just uh, I'm excited to see what you have it your sleeve next time, whatever that may be. I'm not trying to pressure you into doing something crazy, but yeah, if it happens, anyway. If I see an opportunity, I'm going to try it. Nice. So what do you think about Antoine? I mean, you talked about him briefly, but as an opponent, he's a, he's got a big name in, in Quebec already, even with such a, a limited amount of experience. I'm finding it curious how, uh, you know, they, they've taken to him already uh, and sort of they're, they're hyping him up as, as the next coming and he's really got limited experience. Um, you have much more experience uh, than, than him. Uh, so what are your thoughts on that? Um, like I said before, right? Like it doesn't really matter. I think it's just another fight. We look at the opponent and we see if we can beat him, right? We, yeah. I think I can. I don't know if I can. And that's why we're doing the fight, right? Yeah. That's what I say all the time. I mean, you can talk all you want. Like before the event, some some fighters go off on each other and they trash talk and all that stuff. At the end of the day, that door's still getting closed and there's three of you in there with the referee. So, I mean, that's when the real question gets answered. Yeah. Hopefully the referee can give him a cheap shot and then it'll be easier for me. <laughs> Maybe no one's looking at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Try to get the the lights or something to turn out and then he wakes up yeah. the lights come back on and he's on the ground something like that nice distraction well maybe now that amin's not fighting maybe he can sneak in the back and do something done oh he says he's gonna bring a chair oh there you go folding metal <laughs> chair across the back perfect 
Okay, Kevin, that's all I got, man. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to watching your fight. I'll be watching it online, unfortunately, and not, I won't be there in person. But uh wish you the best of luck. Is there anything you'd like to say, anybody you'd like to thank before we go? Uh, shout out to my sponsors, Great Itch Living, uh, Bait Apparel, Click, MMA. Um, and I think that's it. I'm not sure. That's all you need. Yeah. yeah. All right, so last question. Does Aaron Jeffrey make you slop? No, he doesn't make my slop. I make my slop. I make worse food than he does. His food oh. actually looks good. It's like eggs on top of bread, and there's nice veggies. Steak night tonight. Yeah. He's making ste- AJ is the king of steak. He just guesses, and then it comes out perfect every single time. Oh, I have to challenge Aaron to a steak off then, because I'm a pretty good steak maker myself. Well, let's hit do it this summer. Okay, we will, for sure. All, All right, right, Kevin. Best of luck, my friend. Uh, have a great fight.